Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're going to create a pattern of watercolour flowers in Adobe Photoshop. So I'm going to start by opening my watercolour flower design. I've already had it open so I'm just reopening the file. Now these are flowers that were just watercolour painted into my notebook. I took a photograph of them with my phone, sent that to myself and opened it up here in Photoshop and it is a bit of a grimy mess so there are some finger marks and things in my notebook that have been picked up. None of that is really going to matter. It's also got a slightly blue tone to it. Again, not worried about that. I'm going to open up the layers panel with window and then layers so we can see what's going on. I'm going to unlock this layer. I'm going to place a new layer in the document just clicking on this new icon. White is my foreground color here so I'm just going to select my paint bucket tool with this new empty layer selected. I'm just going to dump paint into it. Now this white is going to act as a catch-all in a minute so that when we isolate these flowers we'll be able to see white underneath the image, not the little squares of transparency. It's going to make things a little bit easier to see. With this layer of flowers selected I'm going over here to my object selection tool. I'm just going to hover over each flower and leaf in turn and select it. If I make a mistake I'll press Ctrl Z and try again. There's a mistake so just make sure that I get what it is that I'm looking for here. You'll see up here that I'm in add mode so every time I click on a flower it's added to the selection. It doesn't actually replace the current selection. That's pretty important. I'm going to cross here to select and mask. At this point we can make some adjustments to it. We can adjust the radius or select smart radius. All you're doing here is trying to find a more improved selection if you like. But you can see that we're seeing the white underneath. That's really helpful. If we didn't have that white there we would just be seeing through to that transparent grid. Not very helpful. Feather is not going to help me very much. It's just going to make everything really soft. So you probably don't want a feather. I do want a bit of contrast here. Shifting the edge will either move the edge in or out of your image, which might help a little bit. But I'm pretty happy with this. You can also select to decontaminate colors if you want to. But I'm not getting any much contamination from the page underneath. So that is maybe potentially of limited value. In terms of output, I can determine what I want to output to and I'm going to choose a new layer with a layer mask. I'll click OK. So what we have here is the flowers on a separate layer and this is the background. So you can see they're separated from each other. Now to bake this mask into this image, what I can do is just drag the mask onto the trash can. And when I do a mask, whether I want to apply the mask to the layer before removing it. So I'm going to say, yes, I do. At this point, if we want to make any changes to the flowers, for example, cleaning them up in any way, we can do so. So we could go to Layer, New Adjustment Layer. And so you could do things such as adjusting the vibrance. Adjusting the vibrance will increase the color in the image a little bit so you can make it more pink if you like and you could decrease or increase the saturation as you do that. Might like my flowers to be a bit brighter, that's a possibility. You could also choose to layer a new adjustment layer and perhaps a curves adjustment which would again allow you to adjust the midtones in the image. Sometimes a S-shaped curve dragging up on the lights and down on the darks can give you some improved color in the image. Again, I'm liking this a little bit more so I'm going to add that to the image. At this point I want to bake these adjustment layers into my layer so I'm going to select all three layers, right click and choose merge layers and that's going to merge the fix into this layer. The next thing I want to do is to cut my flowers out. So each one of these is an individual flower. To do this I'm going to the lasso tool with my layer selected. I'm going to drag around the first of my flowers. I'm going to layer new, layer via cut. So that's going to cut this flower to its new layer. I'm going to learn the keystroke as I'm here, shift Control J. Once it's on its new layer, I'm going to right click this part of the layer and choose Convert to Smart Object. And then I'm going to do that for the rest of these objects. 
making sure I come back to this lab before I press Control shift j making sure I right click over here to convert it to a smart object. I'm also going to make sure that I place these in a rough sort of square pattern because I am going to cut this piece of paper off in a minute. So I'm just going to work through every one of these shapes, cutting them to their own layer and making them into a smart object. The smart object process is a requirement in terms of creating a pattern with the new pattern tool in Photoshop. It just works better with smart objects. Here I'm not worried about the fact that I'm drawing really big shapes with my lasso tool. I'm just making sure that the shape that I'm drawing doesn't impinge on any other object, but you can be fairly inaccurate with these. It's not going to hurt. To switch to the Move tool, I'm just pressing the letter V. You can see here that in the thumbnail, the Move tool is the letter V. That just speeds things up a little bit. Make sure each time that you come back to the image layer when you go to do your cut or there won't be anything to actually cut and it won't work. The shortcut for the lasso tool is going to be the letter L. I should have had that last shape on a layer all by itself, but I think I left a little piece of something here. Not worried about that. I'm just going to delete it because it's not contributing. So right now I've got this sort of general area here. So I'm going to resize my artboard. For this, I'm going to choose image and then canvas size. We know that this is 1781 across. So if we want to make it about the same height, I'm going to make it 1800. And I'll just make this 1800 as well. So we're working with a square document. When I go to click OK, you'll see that the new canvas size is smaller than the current canvas size. I'm just going to click away right now because what I want to do is I want to make sure that the current document is placed up here centrally at the top and then I'll click OK and then I won't get any clipping of my artwork. So everything's looking pretty good. I don't need this layer any longer. I'll trash it and I don't need this white layer any longer. Either I'm going to trash it because it's just getting in my way. If I want to add a background layer back at the right size then I'll do so just by clicking on the new icon here, the new layer icon, and filling it with white. And then I'll make sure that it's positioned behind everything in the document. Now another option, rather than just adding a white filled layer to your document, and a really smart option, is to add a fill layer. So I'm going to Layer, New Fill Layer, and I'm going to choose Solid Color, and click OK. Now I can add a white solid color layer, but I can also add a different color one. And the beauty of this particular tool is that you can actually position your pointer on these colors and see how they're interacting with the image itself. So you can see that you can get different results. I'm kind of liking these sort of gray colors here. So I'm going to select that and click OK. At any time, if I want to change the color, I can just click on this and choose a different color just cancel out because I like that one quite a lot. Now all of our flowers are on separate layers and they're all smart objects. So now let's go to view and then pattern preview. We're going to be warned that it works best with smart objects, but we've already done that. So we don't need to worry about that too much. I'm just going to zoom out a little bit and now we can go and arrange our objects. So you can see that there are definite lines in this pattern. We want to start breaking these up. When I click on a shape, you can see I have auto select selected and also here I have show transform controls. So I can see my shapes and then I can just move them wherever I want them to be. 
It's also possible to duplicate them. So you can actually take a shape and make a duplicate of it if you want to. To do that, you're going to select it and then hold down the Alt or Option key and just drag a duplicate away. For this one, I'm going to rotate it slightly so it doesn't look like an exact duplicate of something that I already had. When you do that, it duplicate is also a smart object so that just speeds things up a little bit and it can be useful where you've got a shape and you may want to make multiples of it now this one's not working for me let me just see if I can make a duplicate of it okay so that's fine now I'm going to edit and then transform and I'm going to flip it horizontally so that this bud goes in the opposite direction so at this point, all we're doing is looking for a nice arrangement of flowers and something that doesn't look like it's got definite lines through it, definite edges. You can rotate these shapes if you need to or resize them. I'm just going to rotate this one to get a slightly different result. You can also zoom out so that you can say things more clearly and just make sure that you're not seeing problems with the pattern. Remembering of course that you can duplicate shapes, you can also delete shapes if you want to. So I'm pretty happy with this. If I am then I'm going to the pattern options here, this pattern palette. I'm going to the very end and I'm going to add in my pattern by clicking on the plus sign. Now you can also get of course to this patterns palette by choosing window and then pattern. Now I'm a bit aware that probably this background is not ideal so let's double click on it and let's choose a slightly lighter background. So I think I'm preferring something like this now. I'll just click OK. Again back to the patterns dialog here. Again click the plus sign and we can add a second version of the pattern. You can see this one's very light and this one's much darker. Before we finish up, we'll go to view and then turn off pattern preview. And we'll make sure that we save this file because this is our pattern file. So this is what we would open up and work with if we wanted to make changes to our pattern in future. That's really important. But let's see what our pattern actually looks like. So I'm going to make a document that is much bigger than my pattern document. So I'm going to make this 6000 by 6000. So we can just see what this pattern looks like. So I'm going to deselect the lock on the background layer of this document, go into the patterns dialog and just click on it. And that's filling this document with my pattern. And if I want to change it, I can fill it with the second pattern. So this is a very simple way of creating watercolor patterns from images that you paint in your sketchbook. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.